Hey guys, welcome to the first Q&A video. These are the questions that you asked about lasers, and we have two coming up. But uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section of this video, and we'll do our best to get to them before the trip's over. So uh, check it out. Okay, so our first question, and some of these may sound obvious, but these are real questions that people did ask, and I'm not going to disclose names on these. Uh, but uh, here's the first question, and, and I thought this was good. Do I need a permit for a high-powered laser? Yes. Uh, the high-powered lasers uh, start what are called Class 3B, uh, start at powers above 5 milliwatts and go up to, in Class 4, whatever you want, a bajillion watts, whatever. Pretty much anything that's north of 5 milliwatts, with a couple of exceptions, uh, like the 10 milliwatt fat beam stuff, you do not need a variance for, you do not need any kind of a license. Uh, pretty much anything that's north of 5 milliwatts in the Class 3B and 4 range, you need a license from the federal government to be able to use it. How old do you need to be to get a variance? You have to be 18. Uh, it's uh, it's just like doing pretty much anything else. Um, you can't buy cigarettes until you're 18. Uh, they don't want you to buy a gun until you're 18. Uh, in some places it's even older than that. Uh, high powered lasers can be dangerous if they're used improperly. They're really, really easy to use safely, but they want to make sure that the people who are buying them, you know, have the maturity and the basic skills uh, to be able to use them safely consistently. So they really want you to be 18, uh, and if for absolutely no other reason, you can't sign a contract until you're 18, and a variance is essentially uh, a licensing, contracting, legally binding document. Right on. So, Are mirrors okay at venues, and what to avoid when using lasers? What do you avoid? What do you avoid in terms of? Of terms of anything. What do you not do? Oh, okay. Um, the first rule of lasers, especially high-powered lasers, but lasers in general, just don't shoot them at people. Like, they're not supposed to be shot at people. Uh, in terms of mirrors and stuff at venues, um, the answer is it kind of depends. The big goal here is when you're using a high-powered laser, you want to make sure that you know where all of your laser beams are going to stop. So, for instance, there are lots of venues, clubs and stuff that have like a balcony level where you'll have like one big laser in the center that'll hit a whole bunch of mirrors around the balcony that'll bounce the laser beam off at all kinds of crazy angles. Now, that's obviously set up that way. So, if you go into like a catering venue, you're doing a wedding, you're doing a prom, you're doing whatever, um, and there are these, you know, great big mirrors in the back of the room and you're shooting your high power laser and it's bouncing off the mirror and it's coming down into the crowd, that's not so good. So, mirrors are not really a big deal as long as you know where the laser beams are going to hit and where they're going to stop. Uh, and in terms of what you can't do with them, you can't use them outside. Like, you can't use them in like open air, like an open air festival or something like that, unless you have special clearance from the FAA, which is kind of hard to get. Uh, but generally, you don't want to use them outside, and especially with lasers, they're really sensitive, so you don't want to, like, expose them to a lot of humidity or extreme cold or extreme heat anyway. Uh, so best to just use them indoors, and you just want to keep them away from people in general. Right on. Now, Goose, Goose is a friend of mine. In the, uh, hello, Goose. I haven't seen you in a while. Goose Hi. is over in England. Hi, Goose. Uh, Goose wants to know, what is a safe distance for crowd scanning? Uh, uh, that entirely depends on what power of laser you're using and where in the world you are. Uh, in the United States, you cannot crowd scan with anything that is above 5 milliwatts or 10 milliwatts in a fat beam. Um, crowd scanning, for those of you who don't know, is when you actually intentionally shoot a laser at the crowd, where you'll have like a group of people right here and you'll have a big laser right here, and the laser will actually scan across the crowd like this. Okay. Um, in the UK, uh, in uh, most of Europe, uh, in fact, most of the world that's not the United States, uh, they have different rules about crowd scanning, but they're much less rigid than the United States is about it. The United States does not want you shooting anything uh, that's above 5 milliwatts at a crowd. Um, in the UK, different set of rules, very similar to the US, but they're just much more lax with crowd scanning specifically. Okay, okay, right on. Let's see here. Why are blue lasers so expensive? Blue lasers, um, blue lasers are like perfect diamonds. Uh, you can get all kinds of different diodes and stuff. You can get gas diodes, you can get uh, crystalline diodes, you can get all kinds of stuff. But blue lasers are very, very expensive. The actual diode is expensive to manufacture. In terms of size, it's bigger, it's heavier, uh, it's much more difficult to manufacture, and it uses different components in it to get that rich 473-ish nanometer, nice sapphire blue color. Um, 
generally speaking, the cheapest diode you're going to find out there in terms of color is red. Uh, red are the least expensive, easiest to come by. They're very easy to manufacture. That's why pretty much everything you see in the world of consumer products, like you go to like a Home Depot or something like that, you get yourself a laser line level or a cat toy or whatever. Right. Um, it's always red. It's, it's always red. Um, like the laser pointers you buy at Staples for like when you're doing presentations and stuff, it's always red because uh, those are by far the least expensive. Green is the next most expensive, and then blue is just pff, forget it. Um, I mean, even wholesale, like lower power wholesale, like what we would pay for them, uh, blue laser diodes can easily cost six, seven hundred dollars uh, for even a fairly low powered one. Uh, whereas, you know, a green diode may only cost a hundred bucks or less. Um, so you're talking about a really different, a really big price jump when you go from green to blue.